think in your mind that your yeah. audience is a coach, a trainer, a teacher, an educator in the real estate space. That's your audience. Oh, good. Is okay. Good. Let's talk about money and marketing and yep. And uh, let's talk about. Can I use can I use adult length? Can I drop a? Can I say shit once in a while or is whatever the, you want to do. Okay, I I'm not an f bomb guy, just so don't worry. Uh, but whatever you want to do. I, but once in a while, I like to speak like an adult to adults. So here we go. You ready? I'm ready. Born ready. Let's dive in. No music intro? Nah, I'm sure we'll... No, nah, we're, we're going to keep this simple. No music okay. intro. Just go straight to the meat. No fluff. Right to the point. Okay. What's going on, everybody? It's Brian Tripp. Welcome to another episode of the REI Coaches Podcast. Real estate investing. Real estate investor coaches. See, I, I don't even have... This is only my third one I've done. I don't even have this all, all done up yet. But we're going to get right to the meat. No fluff. Got my great friend, Mr. Claude Diamond with me. If anyone is going to talk to us about how to be a great coach and mentor, it's going to be this guy right here. So Claude, I want to start off by asking you a question. I, maybe I'm going to ask you some questions you've never been asked before. Hopefully. All right. Let me, we want, a, let me give myself an injection of sodium pentothal <laughs> and um, have a couple, have a little cut shot of this. Here we okay. go. You want the truth. Well, this is early. This is 7.30 in the morning for you, so, yes. so here I'm we go. California. I'm in beautiful San Diego, California, one of my homes. I want to know, first uh -oh. off, before we really kind of dig in, because I'm going to ask you about your business, what, how your business is structured, every, everything, um, your coaching business. But okay. I really want to start off by asking you, what made you get into coaching and teaching and the kind of the guru space? What made you even do that in the, in the beginning? Money. Thank you for being honest. Yeah, I make, a, I, I make a shitload of money coaching and mentoring and consulting. And I got to tell you something. I do real estate. I still do real estate. And I got started in real estate. And you know how hard you got, you know how hard it is to make money in real estate, fixing up a property, finding the deal, negotiating the deal, reselling the deal, advertising the deal. You got to work damn hard. And the truth behind the matter is um, I remember once my this is thirty something years ago. Um, I just did a real estate deal. I made about ten, eleven thousand dollars, an enormous amount of money for my family at that time. And I gave it to my wife. She's my accountant partner, uh, my girlfriend, everything. And um, we wanted to buy something, and she said, "No, money's all gone." I said, "What? I just gave you ten thousand dollars, honey." She said, "That went to pay all the bills from the last three months." So you got to work real hard in real estate, and it's feast and famine sometimes. So I got into the consult, I got into the consulting, mentoring part, and I I make a I make a lot of money in between the deals. Talk about so I ask you the why. Talk about the how now. Like 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 give give me the point. Did something click inside of you? Did you always think you wanted to be a mentor, or no. it just it just the money was there and you jumped in? No, no, no. Um, I'm I'm an insecure little cream puff. Uh, who would want to pay me? That's what I said. So I'm on the phone one day. A little cute little story. True. I'm on the phone one day, and um, you know people. Call, I started writing articles. I started doing a little public speaking. I wasn't consulting or mentoring then. And a lady, and a lady called, and people would call me up and ask me questions. Hey, I read your article about lease purchasing and creative real estate and gut sales. And um, people would start uh, asking me questions, and I was enamored by it. And I'd be on the phone 30, 45, 60 minutes doing all this free consulting. And one day my wife was home. She heard me on the phone with this one lady for about 45 minutes. And when I got off the phone, she said the, she said the word to me that really resonated, that made a tremendous impact on my life. She said schmuck. She's a Jersey girl. Um, and it's not a term of endearment. It, 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 it means you could do better. Uh, I said, who, she said, why are you giving away so much free information? I said, well, it was a nice lady. She called me and she said, you, it took you so much time to learn what you, what you, what you've learned, what you've done, the mistakes, the successes, the failures and everything. And you just gave it away. What's the value she's going to place on it? And I said, well, do you think someone would pay you, me? And well, she said, why don't you find out? So the next lady called me uh, from LA and she said, I have a bunch of problem properties, tenants aren't paying on time. I said, why don't you convert them to a lease purchase? She said, I read your article, that's why I'm calling. Can you help me? Can you send me your contracts uh, and everything? I said, 
well, ma'am, they took me a while to design, you know, to design everything. I went to four years of law school to learn how to do stuff like that. And um, I said, I'll charge you a, a fit. Uh, she said, I'd love to take you out for lunch. I said, well, I, so it's going to cost a little more than lunch. It's going to cost you $1,000. I, I pulled a number out of the air. Guess what she said, Brian? Done. I said, yes. And it blew me away. I said, oh, my God, someone is paying me $1,000. A lot of money. My rent was only $750 then, 30 and years And your ago. immediate thought was, why did I say 1000 She would have paid more. Wow, thousand dollars today. That buys a lot of diapers. We had a newborn baby, um, you know, and everything like that. And I said, maybe I need to do more of this. And then I got the idea. You know what? I'm the product of a mentor. I had a great mentor. I talked about him last in other interviews and stuff like that. And I said, maybe I should start doing mentoring. So I started, you know, do I, I started uh, doing a mentoring business. And a, a very famous guru, whose name I won't mention, told me it will never work. People don't want mentors. They want these big group things, you know, these big seminars, which you still see today. You know, the, the Holiday Inn with the bad coffee and the stale donuts and the guy with the red tie jumping up and down and says, run to the back of the room. Okay, I don't, I don't do that. Uh, he said to me, this would never work. And that just got me my stubborn streak. I said, I'm going to make it work. And little did I know, my wife saying, I'm sorry this is so long, but it's, it's the great story. My wife calling me a schmuck was the basis of a multi-million dollar idea. And, and Claude, at the time, you were doing presumably a lot of real estate at the time, right? Yeah, feast and famine, though. You want, right. you want the truth, you said, right? If the truth about real estate, when you're getting started, you know, you don't... It's not as easy as everybody makes it sound. You know, these guys, oh, I did 18 deals uh, in, my, in my boxer shorts before, my, uh, before I had my cornflakes this morning. It's such bullshit, okay? It's hard to do deals. It's hard to find deals, negotiate deals. You need a lot of skills. You need a lot of tenacity. It's hard. I, I love this business, and I've made a lot of money in real estate. But getting started and making consistent income to pay your bills, that, that takes a while. That takes a lot of experience and time. So the consulting, the coaching, the mentoring filled the gap with the feast and famine that I was talking about. Does this resonate with your audience? Because uh, this is my story. I, I don't know if this is true for everybody, but it's my truth. Yeah. Well, I think the fact that you're willing, and I appreciate it, to say that you are, got into it for the money or initially, I think is important. What's wrong with that? What did we, we got, listen, I didn't want a Lamborghini in the garage. I wanted to pay the rent, pay him bills. I wanted to be a man and take care of my family. Is that too politically incorrect? No, I, I think the typical answer is, oh, I wanted to give back and I wanted to, you know, help people. And, and I want to do all these things too, but that, I think that that comes secondary. Well, listen, it's all secondary. Charity begins at the home. I'm going to be opinionated here. Is that all right? I'm the only guy, I do the gut sales training program. I'm the only guy in the world who says that the salesperson comes first. You're a hardworking, honest, decent, ethical guy. Why shouldn't you be rewarded for your hard work? You're not going to go, you're not going to, you're going to go take care, pay your bills, take care of your family, have good health care, uh, have, have put your kids through college. Well, that's the whole point, right? Isn't that what we all want? This is America, free enterprise. That's what I wanted. Yeah. It I'm not, sounds. I'm not ashamed of making money because uh, my mentor Max used to say, "Money makes a good man better and a bad man worse," and I really believe that. I like it. It sounds to me like you got into the consulting space. Mm -hmm. Kind of how you broke into the space is through writing articles and doing some public speaking. That's how. That's really what kind of led you down the or got you started. It was before internet. Okay, so let's talk. I want to talk about this because I, I, well, now that there's the internet, you have even a better chance to start writing blogs and start writing articles yeah. and start putting out videos and content and stuff like that. So I want to <laughs> talk about that for the person that might be listening to this who is brand new to coaching. And I want to get, I want to get my first client, Claude. Help me get my first coaching client or my first mentoring client. Do you recommend putting out some sort of content, whether it's in the form of article, video, things like that? Um, absolutely. You know what's wonderful? In the old, 
the, in the old days, pre-internet, you know, internet's relatively new. It's only started in the 90s, literally. It's only 20-something years old. Before the internet, we had newspapers, we had magazines, we had radio, TV. We, you know, we still have these things today, but, they, but they're not anywhere as influential as this remote control device to the universe. So I wrote articles. I, I, I was spending literally, my word of honor, $10,000 a month back in the Stone Age. New York Times, Washington Post, Wall Street Journal. USA. You were spending money to get your stuff published? Mm-hmm. That to get ads to attract people. I was putting in free books, how to do lease purchasing, uh, all kinds of things. Same things I do today, uh, I, but small classified ads. I also wrote articles for Creative Real Estate Magazine. It was an old magazine. Uh, I don't think it's around anymore. Uh, I wrote for years for uh, A.D. Kessler, uh, who was the publisher. Um, 300 to 600 word articles about my real estate deals and stuff. People would read them. They'd call me. Uh, boom. In conversion. Real easy conversion. Quali I was attracting quality prospects by writing and advertising in, in newspapers. Also, US, um, uh, Entrepreneur Magazine, Success Magazine, 10000 a month. Big. That's all. That was a Man, it was time in my life I wasn't making 10000 a year. And here I am, I'm spending 10,000 a month just on advertising. Yeah. And today, guess how much I'm spending? You're gonna love this. I don't know. You're gonna love this. Zero, nada, bubkin. Zero? Zero, word of honor, nothing, nothing. Do you know why? And this is the thing that cracks me up. While my competition is, I, is and this is, once again, I'm gonna be opinionated, is that okay? Yeah, sure. There's so much guru bullshit about yeah. You, Mel, Mel, here's a rule. Millennials don't go to the post office. <laughs> they don't even know what a post office is, okay? Um, so doing postal mailers, I know it works for some people. It's just, to me, it seems like a, a silly expense, a high expense with a very low return rate. Same thing with uh, using virtual assistants with a bad accent from a third world country, calling up your people or, or things like that. All I do Here's the, here's the takeaway. All I do is put out compelling content in, I'm mostly in video, okay? I love, I use YouTube. I have over a thousand videos on YouTube. From YouTube, uh, I can disseminate my video, and I have a big thousands of people follow me on YouTube, get a lot of clicks. From YouTube, I can also, and it, they make it so easy. YouTube's owned by Google, okay? So you got the number one and two largest web presence in the world. And you can connect your videos to LinkedIn, to Facebook, to Twitter, to Pinterest, to, um, oh God, there's so many, so many, all the web pages you can connect to. So one video, two to four minutes in length, that is non-commercial, okay? Don't make it commercial. Don't make it me, 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 give me your money, 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 trust me, trust me. That's old, that's 1960 selling. Doesn't work anymore. You've got to earn trust first. You've got to give quality content that is pertinent, compelling, contemporary, and you also have to create incentives to so that you virtually attract a new audience. I get. I, yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm give me an way. example of an incentive. A free book. Here, I've written all these books. In fact, any of your uh, people who watch this, they want my book for free. Uh, all they got to do is say, like, well, you, I love Brian. Go to ClaudeDiamond.com and say, I love Brian Tripp, and I'll give him a free book. This is, the, this is a book. I wrote all these books. Here's my first book. Uh, whoops. The Mentor, uh, the Mentor Teaches Success. About my relate, it's a story about it, how yep. I met my mentor. Yep. Then I wrote The Mentor Teaches Got Sales. I'm not doing a commercial here. I give these away for free. I sell them on Amazon for a lot of money. I make money every day. I get a little PayPal thing for my product sales. By the way, your coaches and stuff should also have product sales, another stream of income. You don't but, think that's outdated? Sorry, sorry. No, go ahead. I'll ask that later. I'll but, save that question. That's a good one. Yeah. Part but, of my, but. my, it's not outdated is because if I sell them a book and they read the book, now they know who I am. And if inside the book I say, call me, I answer my own phone, or call me for a free 15-minute consultation on Zoom, on Skype, on FaceTime, what's my chances of closing that person? Much higher 
than sending out blind mailers or telemarketers or, or cold call or, or auto dialers and things like that. I'm not scared to, I believe in direct gut. My gut sales method is about direct selling. We've lost that skill set. We talked about that in some of your other videos, but if I can virtually attract quality leads, don't give me a hundred garbage leads. Give me five, 10 good leads a day. That's all I need to do to get new clients every day. I sign up new clients every month and I'm that cheap. So Claude, I want to, if you don't mind, I want to kind of get into your business model a little bit here. So your sure. business model is to virtually attract people, virtually zero on marketing dollars, yes. virtually attract people. You want five to 10, it sounds like you want five to 10 leads a day. Minimum. I want to talk to at least five people a day, five prospects a day. And, and then you get them on a Zoom call or a consultation type of call yeah. and you close them. So talk about what are you saying to them and what are, you, what are you trying to get them to do? Obviously, buy your mentoring. Get into the specifics Absolutely. of that if you don't mind. Absolutely. And this is, where, this is where everybody is working on the wrong end of the problem. This, we're doing a thing for coaches and other future mentors and everything else, correct? Uh, yep. Okay. Most people work on the strategies, on the content part of their marketing. Then they work and spend a lot of money on the marketing itself. They, but the, and those two are important, but they're secondary and tertiary. What is primary is the conversion. It is persuasion and influence. Can I get on that phone and not give a presentation, not read a script? not beg for the order, but sound like an authority figure who's, at, who's doing a diagnostic, who's asking questions. Brian, why are we talking today? How can I help you? What are you looking for? What's the biggest challenge in your life? Tell me how you and I can do business today. What are you, what are you looking for? Boom. What does your doctor say when you walk in the office? Where's it hurt, Brian? I haven't right. seen you in a while. Why are you in here, right? He doesn't start saying, I got a special on back surgery. Do you see our coupon in the paper? You know my jokes on that. Okay, so why are we giving these boring, premature features right. and benefits, intellectual presentation? Why are we reading a script? Why are we learning how to talk to people and get them into an emotional state where they say, Brian, I love you. Where do I sign? Let's do this. I'm ready. I, you got me psyched, man. Let's do this. I hear so, this, and this is, my, this is my drug, by the way. You want to know what turn? I think you, earlier before we were recording, you were asking me, what's my, what turns me on? What's, what's my big thing? <laughs> I didn't ask you that specifically. Well, Matt, I, I, I told you I like to exercise. I like to run 10 miles every day, and sure. we talked a little bit about diet and stuff like that. But what really, my drug of choice is the rush I get when somebody says yes. And I got, and I have provided for my family, for their future security. My house, this beautiful home in San Diego is free and clear. Thanks to those good people who I respect tremendously. I have to, but I have to get them, I have to get them to, to trust and see the value that I give. And you've got to sell people by finding, by earning that. And by not sounding like a goofy used car sale. Why are we doing something with, the, most people are doing they're doing, they're doing things with a 100% failure rate. I, wanna, I don't want to fail. I want to succeed. Most marketing, most people cannot sell, and they're doing the wrong kind of marketing to the wrong people, and they have a 100% failure rate, and the rejection kills them. Guess what happens when there's too much rejection? You think you're a failure. You quit. Do, you, do we make more phone calls? This is, whoops, that was my watch. Okay. Do we make more phone calls? I can make phone calls through my watch, by the way. Um, it's an Apple watch. Do we, what happens? See, I'm just concerned with failure. Okay. And most people, what they're doing gives them so much rejection, affects their ego, their id, their super ego, that this phone becomes a cactus. Guess what? Guess how you make a lot of money as a coach, as a mentor. You talk to people every day and they see the value in what you're offering. But if you don't talk to people every day, you're doomed to fail. Is this being too honest? No, well, it's the truth, so I hope not. It's, it's the truth for me. If yeah, I talk to people, I keep Mrs. Diamond happy. <clears throat> I, money, is ne money, is not, money has not been an issue in my family, thank you, Lord, uh, for almost 30 years here because I know how to give good phone. And that's the key. 
for your coaches and mentors and consultants out there. They're working on the wrong end of the problem. You've got to work on persuasion and influence. You've got to learn the right words to say, the right questions. You've got to have a system of sales. I guarantee it that if you use the gut sales method and you practice it the right way, I guarantee that in 30 days, you will be making a lot more money, a hell of a lot. I see it all the time in my students, all the time. They're working on, they're working on their marketing. They're working on their bling bling, their uh, computer applications. They're working on their virtual assistants and all this busy work. Instead of doing the one thing that'll make them money today, what is it? Sales. Talk to people. But yeah. how are you talking to them? I'm giving it all. I mean, I'm, I'm transparent as hell here. So, no, and we appreciate it. Yeah, good. So well, at that point, you wanted something different today. You no, I, hey, listen, this is why we got you on, Claude. I, yeah. I, we were I talking no about problem, this before. I have no problem sharing my truth. I've got a great yeah. life here. Okay, I got great kids. I got a wonderful wife for 33 years. And I got a business where I can make money from my car, from the bathroom, from my desk, a bad visual with the bathroom. But I don't need a fancy office. I don't need 100 employees. I just need to know how to talk to another human being on a consistent basis and get in their mind that I give value and I can solve their problems. Claude, so when you when you when you're closing them, when you ask that that question, you know, um, you know what what is it? You know, how can we do business? What are you? Are you? I think you told me on a previous um, time that we talked that you kind of have a set price. Um, do you, or what, do you negotiate anything? Is it a set price? You just come out with it. Do you mind sharing with us numbers like that? Um, how many are you trying to close a month? Things like that. Um, actually, I'm, I do a true one-on-one -on -one mentoring program. Okay. okay. I don't hand off my business to my assistants. I do so, a group call on Monday so I can handle on Zoom so I can handle all my people. And then I do two private calls a month with my students as I, um, I have a lot of students in, in um, 19 different countries. Um, we just got somebody in Belgium, um, something new. Um, and I'm limited to how many people. I'm always trying to reinvent and streamline my business. So I, I talk, I schedule with people. I speak 15 to 30 minutes in a private call. My students can make emergency calls. All my students get my private cell phone. They can do unlimited texting and email to me, and I answer the same day. And we do a group call every Monday for one hour where they can role play, ask questions, and network with other successful students. Um, this is, a, this is my, <clears throat> my business model that I developed. I don't know anyone else who is doing this kind of one-on-one -on -one accountability. I want people to succeed. I don't want to just take their money and then they disappear. That's not the point. I want to see people learn the gut sales method. I want to go out and I want to hear them say, Claude, change my life. I'm getting on the phone. I just did a deal. I just made 5,000, 20,000, 100. That's what I want to hear. The number one, and I got to solve that by working with people. Um, I have a one-year program, a three-year program, a licensee program. Um, uh, my, you know, I, I charge people up to $75,000 for what I do. I charge a lot. I have a one-year program that's a lot less money. I have a three-year program, which is my premium program. And then I have a licensing program for someone gotcha. who wants to teach guts, you know, to gut sales. And Got it. I want to use my proprietary copyrighted and trademark methods. So, by the way, people should copyright and trademark, protect, protect, protect your proprietary ideas and concepts. Yeah. I, I work with a trail with the best trademark attorney in the United States here in San Diego. Would you share that information with our people? Um, what, uh, what do you mean? Who, who, like, like who it is? Like, would you share his, him or her? I don't, or I don't have his permission to, um, okay. I don't mind. Okay. I, I, if I knew in advance, uh, if someone if, calls, I'll check and see if that's okay with him. First, I never put somebody else's name out in the public. For sure, for sure. If so, guys, if you're watching this or listening to this, if this is something you want to get in touch with Claude, just if that's something you might want to do, get in touch with Claude. His phone number's Call there me, in the background. And, um, I'm sure he'll say yes, but I don't. I didn't ask him in advance. For sure. This is on a video, so for sure. Are a little, a little squeamish about advertising. There's some ethical laws about that. Gotcha. I do want to ask you about the program that you have. Some are going to, obviously it's worked extremely well for you. 
for sure. Yeah. Some are going to say that they don't, and, and it's not for everybody, but some are going to say, I don't like it because it's not scalable. It involves you Biggest, too much. Scalable is the, is the biggest bullshit word in our language right now. Oh, I'm transparent. I'm authentic. I want to scale it. These are bullshit words. Give people one-on-one, -on -one, uh, and I'm, maybe I'm being too judgmental. I am judgmental. Um, but I know what works for me. And what works for me is one-on-one -on -one and accountability. I, I don't know if, I don't think, I can scale Claude Diamond if, you, you know, uh, I can limit how many consultations. I mean, I used to do unlimited consultations. Now I limit my clients to two a month. Maybe, uh, maybe I'll have to do one a month someday. Um, you know, I'm only one person. Um, so when you say scale, are you meaning taking away? I'm all about what's going on in people's heads. What are they thinking? Empathy is my oxygen. I want them to say, boy, he's giving good value. He answers his own phone. He's not handing me off to some guy right. who's making $15 an hour. So scalability to me is, are you evading the value that your customer deserves? Is that too opinionated? I'm sorry. No, I jumped all over you on that. I'm sorry. No, you didn't jump all over me. I, I'm just asking the questions. No, I think I can't I, scale. Can you, when you come home and your kids, you have a couple of kids, right? Yes. Sir. How many, how many have, we have two, two, a five-year-old, and almost three-year-old. When you come home, what do they do? Daddy, yep. give you a big hug. Can you scale that? I don't want to scale it. You answered the question. Thank you. But right. some do, Claude. Some do. Some oh, don't. God bless them. Let them do it. Listen, I don't want to be enough. And, and I've got great respect. Grant Cardone, Gary Vaynerchuk, Anthony Robbins. They have scaled their business to multi hundreds of millions, billion dollar business. I don't need that. I don't want that. I don't want to. I don't want to be where I. I, I like my life. I like the, I go to bed and I don't have to worry about money. The bills are paid. Um, I drive a nice car. I can, I can, you know, I don't need that mega. I don't need to be a mega superstar. I just like to be good old little Claude Diamond, Uncle Claude. And I'm happy there. To all oh. the, you know who my hero is, right? You know this. Max. Pop, Popeye. What did he say? I oh, am yeah. That's all that I am. I said, I just got to be myself. You don't, don't shoot for the, you don't have to be the biggest, brightest star in the sky. Most people that I work with just want to take care of their bills and their yeah. family and be free from financial worry. So do you have to scale all this? Do you have to do all the scaling all the time? Pick up, the, pick up the damn phone, talk to two, three, five people a day. You'll make all the money you want. The customers will love you because you're giving them value and you're accountable to them and you you won't have to worry about paying your cable bill. I think here is the underlying issue. People that get into coaching the re for the real reason that I think we've talked about. Um, I think if you were to poll them and they were honest, they're going to say the money, the lifestyle, they get burned out. And I think they get burned out because they don't, like it seems like Claude, you have this amazing, you were made for this. Like it's your passion to do this. Look what I wrote down. So you, I wrote so it Claude, down before you said it because so I Claude, about that. So Claude. You're psychic. Did you know that? <laughs> but, here, but here's where I'm going. Most, I don't want to say all, but most are not that passionate about coaching and educating then don't, then don't go into it then don't do it if it's you got to have passion and you got to have practicality p squared two p's if you don't have passion if you don't love what you're doing i love what i'm doing okay i'm never going to retire i'm going to die with a phone in my hand uh, i love what i i could have retired god knows 15 18 years ago easily i got more than enough money saved away re retirement everything Okay. And, but I love what I'm doing. I love you. What we're doing right now. You know what a thrill, this is endorphins pumping. I enjoy this so much. I've got five, six people to talk to who I'm scheduled with today. I respect these people. I enjoy helping them. If you don't love what you're doing, then go be a, go get a regular job, man. There's nothing wrong with that. God bless those Walmart greeters or sell used dental floss or whatever you do. <laughs> but if you got to, People can spot a, spot a phony. Yeah. You've got to have enthusiasm. You know what's the biggest turn on for people? 
Next word after passion. What am I writing down? You're so good at this. Well, you just started the word enthusiasm. I'm assuming that's what it is. Enthusiasm, yeah. I gave it away. You've got to have enthusiasm. If you don't love what you're doing, why would anyone give you money? Why would I give money? Okay, to somebody. I need. You need trust. You need likability. You need. uh, You got to convey authority. You know what you're talking about. You sound like Robert Cialdini right now. Um. Yeah. He's a uh, great psychological, uh, the uh, psychology of persuasion. Great book. There's many others. Uh, these are psychological triggers uh, to convince people to, yeah. to gain credibility and respect. But if you, if you don't love coaching, consulting, or mentoring, if you don't love it, then you shouldn't go in it. Well, Claude, I think there are a lot of people that do love it in the beginning, and then it gets overwhelming, and they get burned out because maybe they took on too much too quickly. And so you hear a lot of people, they want to build businesses that can scale. Like you just said, kind of. Hand, I was going to ask you about fulfillment. You, fulf, you do all your own fulfillment. You don't pass people off, but mm. there are people that do pass, pass the students off. Good. And, get, and, get, and guess what the – oh, boy – let me get. Let me give myself another shot of sodium pentothal here. Um, I'm the one thing I've noticed from thirty years of being in this business is this is too much truth. Maybe I shouldn't say what I'm going to say next. I'm got a little devil and angel on my shoulder. I want you to say it. Okay. The truth of the matter is the failure rate in many business models is is is, is unbelievably high in the right. '90s. Very high. You cannot, there are companies out there that charge a great deal of money and then they hand you off to an employee. I'm sorry, if that employee was so smart and so successful, why are they working for him? They'd be independent. I, what do we all want? Our own business, our own freedom, right? That's a big word I use a lot, of freedom. If you hand him off to somebody, if you, if you're, you hand him off to somebody who's making uh, 25, 50,000 a year, what's he gonna teach you? I wanna work with, I worked with a millionaire mentor. Guess what he, and I was making garbage, nothing money, okay? I could barely pay my rent when I first met my mentor. Guess what, when, you know what happens when you work with somebody who gives good phone and is, a, and is making millions of dollars? You know what that hap, You know what happens to you? Hopefully it elevates you. Start, you're in, you're in that sphere of influence, mm-hmm. okay? But you gotta love what you do, man. And you want, okay, you wanna delegate it to other people, that's fine. But my whole thing is about building a good reputation, giving people unbelievable value. Um, I have licensees who I have personally trained in this business model. And I want to be different from everybody else, obviously. I, want, I, want, I believe a mentoring program should be one-on-one. You, can't, you cannot scale your children, your mother, your, your, your wife. You cannot scale some things in life. You have to give people value. See, I equivocate scaling to diminishing the, the, the quality and things like that. Now, you can do other streams of income. I sell, as a coach, I sell a lot of product. I sell books. I sell $995 product packages up to $3,000. And they come in every day. Uh, yeah. Here, I'll show you. This is, this, is, this is just from yesterday. This is all money. All money, just from PayPal and sales and thousands of dollars. Okay, that's a stream. If you want to call that scalable, sure, that's automatic. Right. But that also is part of my marketing plan. Someone, someone buys a book or a package, and I include a free mentoring session. But here's a nice tip for your coaches. Um, someone buy, and I talk to them. Now I'm in the selling. I'm in a selling environment. Yeah by the way. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, what do you think about delegating? I scaling. I'm not saying you're wrong and I'm right, but no, I think that there are online courses and you know, things like that, that, that are scalable. But when it comes to the one-on-one, like I've coached one-on-one and I've sold high ticket one-on-one and you, the I'm married to them. Like it's, you know, and I think that that's where I, I did a poor job of, you know, you, you talked about, you know, if I want to scale it back, then I go from, instead of unlimited, I go to two a month, right? So I, I didn't put those things in place and I didn't put enough boundaries in place. I don't mind coming to this desk every day. I go out, I do 10 mile runs every day. Guess what I do during those runs, by the way? I talk to some clients. I schedule with them while I'm out there running. Talk about... 
have, getting exercise, talking to nice people, and getting paid at the same time. Yep. Where's the downside? For me, that's fine. I think everyone has to find what works for them. I'm not saying I'm right and all these other methods are wrong. I'm saying I found what works for me. Um, being hands-on, being a uh, high accountability. Uh, do I take on too much sometimes? Of course. But the pa- I, it's pa- I have such passion for what I do. Yeah. You know, you got to be broke once in your life to appreciate when you have a great business, <laughs> you know, it, Claude, it, you got a lot of, res- you get a lot of respect for money. <laughs> no doubt. For sure. Uh, we'll end with this. This is kind of the last topic I want to bring up um, is when you have a student or a, a mentee who is not successful. Oh, and, well, great question. No one's you, ever asked me that. I love this. You've done everything you can do and maybe they even stop setting the appointments with you mm-hmm. and, and it, maybe they don't do the homework. They don't want to be accountable. Whatever mm-hmm. you've done, everything you can do as a coach, mm-hmm. a, how do you handle that? And B like, how do you handle it? Not just, how do you handle it? Like emotionally, right? Um, you have, it's rare, but it happens. You get a, somebody who goes, I've had people pay me thousands of dollars and they went on the witness protection program. Me too. I Crazy. give them my, I listen, I send them an email for a group call every Monday. I give them my private cell phone. I have a scheduling system. I am available. I am accountable. They cannot call me up and say, Claude, this doesn't work when they're not working with me in the plan that was, uh, that was um, uh, shown to them in the beginning. I give them an outline of what to study, what videos to watch. I schedule with them. Um, if they don't attend and work at it, I do not take responsibility for that. If they are unwilling to change, that's the operative word. You know, everybody wants to go to heaven, but nobody wants to die. I'm sorry, you know, okay. Uh, you, the hardest thing for me to do with some people is to get them to change. Hmm. Um, you know, we, we were talking about diet and health earlier right. today, you and I. Um, it's hard to change, you know, your, your lifestyle, your routines. Yeah. It's really hard. But are you, you know, are you willing to pay the price? People come to me in the beginning, Claude, I'll do whatever it takes. You know, I'm a 24-7, you know. Okay, can you do this simple thing for me? Can you talk? Can you speak to five people today? I don't even care if it's a Walmart greeter, if it's a call for someone who has a house for sale or for rent, if it's a future mentee or a consult. I want you to talk to five people. Can you talk to five people a day? That's pretty simple, isn't it? That's pretty easy. So when we have our meeting, I'll say, tell me about the people you spoke to. It should have been 25 to 35 people last week. Oh, well, you know, Claude, I had to get some windshield washer fluid for my grandma. And you know how that uh, just, you know, the week just disappeared. And you know how I had to walk the dog and, and, you know, and everything. And I said, well, you're paying me. I want to help you, but you you have a job to do. I'm trying to help you. I'm telling you what to do. Uh, you take responsibility for your life. If you want to pay me and not listen to me, that's your choice. Was there a point in time, Claude, where it, where you took it personally and it hurt you? And what did you do maybe to get over that? In the early days, um, I'd get more mad at them than my. I, I, I'm a bit, I, I I believe in accountability. Yeah. I always go to people. Look, if you had a problem, why didn't you call me? You have my number. That's what I'm here for. This is called a mentoring program. Okay. You got all these other programs out there where the guru won't even talk to you, won't answer the phone. You get a recording. Right. Okay. I'm saying, call me. I answer my own phone. I say at the end of every video I do with every client I work with, they get a private number that goes right to my phone, rings on my watch. Um, Do I take it personally? Yes, of course. Um, do I beat myself up over it? No, not if I believe that I did my best and I remained accountable and available. Claude, I can't thank you enough for sharing some really great stuff and being as, um, kind of transparent as you've been. I really do appreciate that. I know it's a lot of these questions. What's that? We we never have anything to talk about, right? Right. (laughs) Tons. Tons, but I just don't think that there are very many people out there willing to kind of put themselves out there like you just did. So I, I, I appreciate that. And I think our community 
is going to appreciate that a lot too. I appreciate you inviting me. This was a great dialogue. Uh, you asked questions that no one has ever asked in an interview. And I like that. I like, uh, you know, I have no problem with the truth and sharing what's worked for me. You can tell I'm a little opinionated. Okay. I don't think everything I do is the absolute truth for everybody, but it's what worked for me. For sure. For me, it'll work for your your audience of coaches yeah. and consultants out there too. Claude, if someone who is a coach or a trainer or a, a maybe a guru or wants to get into that space, um, I see your phone number there in the background. Is that the best oh, way people can get? In, there. Is that the best way people can get in touch with you? Would you prefer yeah. a call, a text, an email? Your your attractive, intelligent audience. All they got to do is Google Claude Diamond. No, you know, and that's all they have to do. They will find th hundreds, thousands of videos on YouTube podcasts that you and I have done. Uh, they will go to uh, my web page where I have a free book. Uh, if they say I love Brian Tripp, I just have to click. There's a little button that says free book. Free book. Uh, they can schedule with me for a free 15 minute con uh, consultation. Uh, I'm the easiest guy in the world to find. And be careful if you call Claude. He's gonna he's gonna close you on that call. It's okay to say no to me. Don't worry about it. I'm not, listen, I, I'm part of the gut sales method is telling the prospect up front, it's okay to fire me. I really mean that too. I'd rather have a quick no than a lingering maybe. Right. <laughs> Claude, thank you again. Appreciate you. Guys, we love you so much. Thanks for tuning in and we'll see you on the next one. Take care. Thank you. All right, that's it. Hopefully that was good. That's a wrap, baby. That's a wrap. You opinionated? That was great. I, I really do. Um, it's surprising. This is the third one I've done where I'm asking a coach or a trainer and I'm, I'm getting in, I'm asking them very tough questions, specific questions, and they're all transparent as can be. And it's, it's refreshing. Was this, it really little, is. was this any different from the other ones you did? Yeah, it was very different. You're okay. different. <laughs> so yes, of course yeah. you, your business model is different. And yeah. I think that's what people, it's going to resonate. And I think the goal here is to show people a lot of different ways that you can do this and do it successfully. And they have to find what works best for them. I think most of the people I work with professionals, I work with million dollar sales guys, corporate guys, mm -hmm. uh, financial services, wall street, real estate, and big real estate investors. I also work with a lot of little guys kitchen table guys. Mm -hmm. And what worries me about the kitchen table guys is they're getting all this stuff and they're getting pulled in 20 different directions. Instead of the one thing that they need to do is become, uh, become really superb in conversion and sales. And, and what worries me is they're, they're getting, uh, oh, the one guy is telling them to set up the applications and hire VAs and do everything. I, th I, I remember when I was the kitchen, I'm still a kitchen table guy. And I think most, and we have to, that, we, I want to resonate with those people and say, this is what you got to work on. Forget about all these other distract. I got, listen, I get people, you've had them too. Oh, Claude, I need to spend two weeks designing my business card. Yeah. You know, what's funny is that, you know, I went through rich dad education. That's how I first got my start in real estate. Robert Kiyosaki. So, well, it wasn't Robert Kiyosaki. It was his, it, it was his, he licensed the name. It wasn't him. Okay. Um, but that's, I promise you, I spent the first two, three, four weeks doing like getting like office supplies and business cards and website design and nothing to do with real estate. I have one question then for you. If you were a mentee, I'd say, why are you in business, Brian? Why am I in business? Yeah. Why are you in business? I'm in business why to make money. Business? I'm in business to make money today. I want to make money every day. Here. I like it. Here's a contract right here. This guy's paying me $500. This guy's paying me $500. This guy's paying me $125. This guy's paying me $100. These are all notes and little things. This is money today, right here. Every day, money comes in from the product sales, from the contracts, from the real estate, from the mentoring. The multiple, these are true multiple streams of income yeah. from one guy sitting on a kitchen table or a desk giving good foam. So why complicate it? Why increase our overhead? Why make it so difficult? Right. When all we got to do is say, hey, I want to help you. You got yeah. a problem.
I think we make it too complicated. We did well. We make it too complicated because there's there's so like we drown in opportunity. There's so much out there to do. We're living in great times right now. Oh yeah, it's and the best. Anyone can make money right now. If yeah. you're not making money right now, you are truly terrible. Yeah. And th but that's yeah. why. Yeah. All you got to do is have an, a device and some Wi-Fi and and be good in sales, which you are. But right now, I would argue in this economy, you could be very average in sales and still make money. You could listen. A oh, question I'm always asked is, what about the coming recession? I always say, so what? Who cares? Is anyone going to stop eating if we have another 2008? The cream will rise to the top. Yeah. You can always make money. You know my definition of success. I said it at the club. I don't remember. Strip me naked. Take away everything. Cars, houses, money. Take away everything. Get my butt to it. Keep me healthy and get me to a telephone. I'll be a one percenter in terms of earning capacity in 30 days or less. Wow. When you can say that, then you're free. It's not about, the, it's not about all the stuff. It's about yeah. the freedom that you know you will always can create. Right. As long as you can get on there. That's all you need. But everybody else thinks there's a magic pill somewhere. It's, it's awesome stuff. Yeah. It's, a, it's the truth. You know, I couldn't speak as passionately about it if I didn't believe it myself. But that's what sets you apart. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I, I hate boring guys who are monotone, soft speakers and everything. God, they, they're a cure for insomnia. Don't you love what you're doing? Where's your passion, man? Claude, I have a call in three minutes. I, I, I would spend the next three hours talking. Always get the, you get the best out of me, man. Bravo. You're a great interviewer. You are a great uh, – you make it so easy. Are you kidding me? You are the be you're the best to talk to because you're so entertaining. What else can I do for you? 